This is Joe with Cloud First Labs, here to demonstrate how Cloud First Labs can use MuleSoft to provide solutions for organizations that are using EDI. Much of the business world runs on business-to-business -business or B2B electronic data interchange, or EDI, transactions. The data in these EDI transactions is difficult for humans to read, but MuleSoft makes it simple to work with. This example will walk through the straightforward process for converting an input EDI file, an X12 810 invoice, to and from a more human-readable JSON format. And note that while we won't actually show it here, MuleSoft can handle any additional transformation and orchestration and processing of this data. Whether that EDI data needs to ultimately be used to update your ERP or to update your CRM, or to notify a user somewhere in some way, or perform any other kind of processing, MuleSoft enables great solutions. So, you know, for this example, we're gonna just look at how easy MuleSoft makes it to convert data from the non-human readable X12 format into a human readable format. And uh, to do that, I started out as we often do with MuleSoft APIs in Design Center. And I'm not gonna go in the weeds on what I set up here, but um, I set up a couple of resources on an API specification here. One is 810 to invoice JSON. The other one is invoice JSON to 810. So, um, you know, the first one takes an X12 810 message. So an invoice um, in X12 format and it converts it to um, a defined JSON format. You can kind of see an example over here of uh, that JSON format. And the other one goes the other way where it's gonna take in a JSON request and generate the um, X12 810 message. From this API specification, we are going to generate a new MuleSoft project. So let's jump over to AnyPoint Studio, do a new Mule project, and I'm gonna name this example EDI Pappy for process API. I'm gonna end it in info for implementation. And um, now we're gonna import that API specification from Exchange. Uh, it was published to Exchange, and uh, so I'm gonna look up it was called example EDI Pappy for example EDI process API. You look it up, there it is. Add it, finish, finish. And it's gonna go find that API specification and it's gonna stub out a couple of flows for the two endpoints in that API spec. There we go. There's that 810 to invoice JSON. Here's the invoice JSON to 810. So, you know, this one's going to go from X12 to JSON. This one's going to go JSON to X12. Um, so how, how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we're going to need the X12 connector. Now, I already have it imported, but if you haven't used it before, you'll have to grab that from Exchange. So you'll come here to search in Exchange and you know, you'll search X12, you'll double click X12 EDI connector, bring it over here and you'll click finish. Now I've already done that, so I don't need to import it again. Um, but, you know, what we're gonna do for our um, use case, again, we are going to have this read from X12 and convert it into JSON. This one's gonna go the other way. So uh, let's find one of those X12 elements. So this one's gonna read, um, read X12. Okay, and then it's going to do a transform message to convert the output from this object into uh, JSON. So um, I'm gonna add some descriptions here to these connectors just to illustrate visually what these are gonna do. Um, so, yeah. so this is going to, this X12 
connector read component is going to read an X12 input and generate a map object from the data. And this is going to take that map object and it's going to map it to, it's going to convert it, I should say, to JSON. The other way, we're going to be going from JSON to X12. So in that case, we're going to start out with a data weave component. I'm going to get rid of what they stubbed in here, but I'm going to start with this. And again, I'm going to just describe what um, this will do. So this is going to convert the input JSON object to an X12 810 object. It's going to be a map object. And then we are going to use the X12 write component. And I'm going to put a little description in here. And this is going to read that map object and generate an X12 output. So this is going to generate that non you know, not very human readable X12 output. This one's going to read that not very human readable X12 as an input. Um, but now we need to configure these X12 connectors. How do we do that? Well, we do that by, um, you need to set up the read and the write component with an X12 EDI connector configuration. So let's do that here. We're going to add a new one. And the key thing, there are lots and lots of settings you can do on this, but for these simple purposes, the main thing, the key thing, is picking the right schema. Um, in, in our case, we are going to um, use schema x12 slash 004010 slash 810.esl. Um, so what we're going to be doing is using um, version 4010 of the 810 document type in X12, and that is an invoice document type. So, you know, that might seem a little random, like where is that coming from? You know, I'll show you here. Um, now let's go, let's go look at where that is actually coming from. So if I expand my project here and I come into this, X12 EDI uh, component or the X12 EDI connector data. We'll see X12 schemas. So let's open these up. And if you remember the first uh, folder, it was X12 slash 004010 slash 810.esl. So if we were to look at this, we're going to see, hey, this is for an invoice document. Um, but anyway, you can see there are lots and lots of options here. Um, and these you know, are supported out of the box with this X12 connector in MuleSoft. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we want to set up both of our um, connectors, both our read and write, to have the same config. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to rename it just to make it clear that this is the X12 810 EDI configuration because the schema that we're referencing here is the 810 schema. So um, now both of these, here we go, both of these are now pointed at that, um, that configuration. Now that it's configured, let's go ahead and even before we've coded any of the um, the data weaves. Now let's run this project and we'll see what happens when we send a valid X12 810 message, invoice message in X12 format to this endpoint. We'll see just how, uh, how cool this X12 connector is and how easy it makes data transformation. This will take a minute to deploy, so check back in a minute. The deployment has finished. We are deployed. So um, this is up and running. Let's now go send a message. I've got a valid 810 invoice message here in X12 format. You can see it's kind of you know hard to make heads or tails in this thing just looking at it off the bat. Let's send this. And it's going to hit a breakpoint. Um, I've set a breakpoint here. And 
you know, it, it stopped here. So let's let's uh, just take a quick look at what the payload looks like at this stage. Mule does a really nice job using whatever libraries it's using under the hood to um, break out that hard to read thing. It breaks it into a Java map of data. So we can see, hey, we've got transaction sets in here. And within that, we've got, all right, and this is our, our version. And we come down here um, into A10. So this is the document type. And within this, we've got an interchange, a group, a heading. And let's look at the detail. Um, the detail is, you know, some of the key stuff. It's all important, but you can just see that it's really cool. You can, you know, dig into what's truly in, um, in that data. And so these fields, these are what we're going to use. All these, like, fields within this map. Um, these are what we're going to use in our data weave transformation uh, to convert it from this format into you know a more readable format in our examples case json one more thing if you're looking for a good way to get this map payload in a format that you can easily write a data weave off of um, you can in the debug mode you can just come here and say output application slash JSON, and this is in the evaluate data weave expression, and output the payload. Uh, what this is going to do, it's going to give you that map payload in JSON format. And now you can come over to the data weave playground tool, and uh, you know you can paste that in, and uh, you know you can write your um, your data weave as desired. You can do your normal MuleSoft uh, data weave transformation in here. So um, this is a really good way to go from this like relatively complex looking map that MuleSoft handily generates for you, uh, turn it into JSON and be able to write your transformation uh, very straightforwardly. We have fast forwarded now and uh, this is the, the data weave that I created. Again, the point of this isn't to show the intricacies of this data weave mapping. This is your straightforward standard MuleSoft development, your uh, data transformation. But, um, you know, it is just really handy to do it in uh, this data weave playground. But I've also got it plugged in, got this transformation plugged in now to um, the code here in Anypoint Studio. Um, in both directions, both going from X12 to JSON and JSON to X12. So uh, now let's see this in action just to uh, see this work. Um, now if I send this request from Postman to, um, to the API, oh, I've still got my breakpoint set. So let's, um, let's remove this breakpoint so it runs through. And Boom, we see it generates the JSON object for this. Um, likewise, I, you know, just did a couple sample payloads here. You see this one was a little bit bigger than the original one. So let's send this through. Um, we see, you know, it generates this as well. This one had two line items, whereas the first one, I believe, just had one. Um, and this one is even bigger, and we'll see, um, I think this one even has multiple invoices, if we were to look at it. Um, yeah, there's the end of the first invoice, here's the second invoice. Um, you know, one invoice has one line item, the other invoice has two line items. So all of this is just to show that, yeah, this data transformation, it works for, um, for X12 documents of different sizes. Of course, you can keep going bigger and bigger. And, you know, the mapping could be more complex, less complex. It depends on your business needs, your true use case. So let's look the other way too. Let's look at uh, the JSON to X12. Um, so for this, we're just gonna grab this uh, JSON that was generated. 
by um, the request. And you'll see this is our example that has uh, two invoices. And um, yeah, so we can see those two invoices. Let's grab this and let's send this to our JSON to 810 endpoint. And boom, we see that uh, this successfully generates a big, um, you know, big output that has those multiple invoices in there. So it successfully, you know, does a data weave transformation from JSON into a map object. And then that map object gets passed to the X12 connector and is uh, converted into the X12 format. So let's just take a, you know, we can just step through this briefly to see it in action. And here we'll do it with a smaller example uh, just to show that it works for multiple examples. Um, so we send the request. Here we've hit the breakpoint. Here's our um, incoming payload. This just has one invoice and the invoice is array. And if we step over it, this normal data we've transformed um, converted that into a um, into a map, a linked hash map in this case. And that linked hash map gets passed into the X12 connector. And um, we're just going to go ahead and you know step over that. And that's the last step. So it returns boom, this X12. So all of this is to show how you can convert from to or from X12 format very straightforwardly using MuleSoft, doing just your, your normal MuleSoft uh, data weave transforms. Um, I'll call out one thing that's especially important for um, going this way, going from JSON into a map object. Um, you know, this is just kind of a freebie. You'd catch it as you started doing this, but I've got all these like filter object where, um, where the item is not equal to null. The reason that's in there is because if you map something, let's say this PID 05, let's say you had a null value here, um, the X12 connector treats it differently. If you have a Java object where PID 05 does not exist as a key at all, versus if PID 05 exists with a null value, you might think that would be treated equivalently. The X12 connector does treat them differently. So you just want to filter those objects out um, if you get them. That, that's kind of an in the weeds thing. Uh, just hopefully it's helpful if, you know, if you're getting stuck somewhere like, hey, why, why am I getting error messages from the X12 connector trying to do a write when I've got a null object um, mapped? You just want to get rid of that null object um, in your application Java map output. But um, all of that to say, it's really, MuleSoft does a great job making X12 really easy to work with. Um, here I show it going you know, to and from JSON. It can go to and from XML. It can go to and from any data format that you can dream of. You can do whatever processing you need uh, because MuleSoft gives you so many options for what to do with the data. But I just want to show that you know, this X12 is not just for other systems. You can do a really nice job doing business to business transactions using X12 and MuleSoft. You can do the same thing with like Edifact and MuleSoft, but uh, MuleSoft makes B2B, it makes EDI straightforward. So uh, good luck to you on your B2B journey. And um, you know, if you want to learn more, hit us up at Cloud First Labs and uh, just know that MuleSoft is a really good bet for your electronic data interchange needs. Thank you.